Hello, hello. It looks like we are live, and welcome to another live stream where who knows what's going to happen. So I'm dealing with a little tripod today, so hopefully um, everything's in frame. Uh, the lighting is terrible in here, as usual. Let me try and actually turn one of these lamps off. Yeah, that helps a little bit. Hey, Josh. So today um, should be a fairly quick video, but that's the curse there. I always say that, and then we go on for so long. Um, so, first off, happy holidays, happy new year. New year's only a few days away. Um, just want to let everyone know, I will be doing a live stream for the new year. I won't be present, let's say, but there's a stream I'll be streaming, <laughs> uh, and I'll tease that probably more tomorrow. Um, but you'll see something on Twitter, and I'll post in the YouTube community if anybody uses that tab. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so that's that's what I uh, am going to be doing. Um, so what I'm going to do to this Mac Pro here is a 2012, it's a mid-2012 Mac Pro. Uh, I'm going to install a second optical drive. Uh, There's something I always wanted to do. It has two slots right here, but from the factory, there's only one occupied there. It was a built-to-order option. Um, there's nothing wrong with the current drive there. In fact, I'm, I'm just going to put the, the old drive in the second bay. Uh, and I'm going to install the, the uh, actually, I don't know which one I'll put where, but whatever. I'll just install it where I install it. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason I wanted to put a new optical drive in there is because every once in a while I'll burn a Blu-ray disc. And the only Blu-ray burner I have for, well, one that's that's really easily to use on a Mac is an external one. And it's USB 3, which is fine. USB 3 is great. It's fast. I have USB 3 card I installed in here. However... Um, having it internal is just much easier. I don't have to worry about the power adapter for the, the drive. I don't have to worry about the cable. Uh, plus that Blu-ray drive, I think it's only a 4 or 6. It's pretty slow. Um, so what I went ahead and did was while I was looking around and, and shopping for things, uh, for gifts and things for the holiday season, um, I came across... Um, well, I was actually in Micro Center. It's an electronic store for those of you who are not privileged to have a Micro Center near you. Um, and this one isn't near me. So I, whenever I make a travel up there, I'm like, eh, maybe I'll stop by uh, and take a look around. So I was in the Micro Center. I was looking around and I saw this. And this is an LG 16X Blu ray burner. And um, the model of this is a WH16NS40. So this will burn CDs, DVDs, and Blu ray. Uh, discs, which is great. Um, the optical drive I have in here, I think it's an 18x super drive, what, what Apple likes to call them. Um, so it's just a DVD burner with uh, CD burning capabilities. Um, so I don't really burn too many Blu-rays. I want to really try to get into it more because uh, one, it's great for backups, and two, I do a lot of home video, um, you know, family home video, like restoration and conversion and copying. And um, I've done a lot with 8 millimeter film and, you know, VHS tapes and stuff like that. And not that the VHS tapes would benefit from any of the resolution Blu-ray can provide, but I can put a boatload of video content on a Blu-ray disc. I think the standard definition uh, limit, let me let me look that up here uh, while I talk here. Uh, the standard definition, I think the limit for a Blu-ray disc, you could hold um, some, some ridiculous amount. Like, uh, I think it's... Let's see. I think it's like four or five hours of very high quality standard definition video, which is great. Um, and that might might even be on a on a higher setting. I think I think I read somewhere it's like nine hours of SD content or something like that. Anyway, uh, you can hold a lot, which is great because um, some of the VHS tapes I convert are like four to six hours, depending on what speed they were recorded in. And sometimes I break them up into discs. And um, also my whole thing of doing that is probably changing because it used to be everyone a DVD player. And for the longest time, I'm like, you know what? I'm still going to make them for DVDs. And yeah, now everything's online. Um, but getting the, the trick is getting private content to stream to someone's TV is easier said than done. So a Blu-ray disc makes it a little bit easier. So anyway, that's uh, one reason. The other reason is backup and storage. Um, Blu-ray discs can store up to, I think it's, the 25 gigs and 50 gigs is like the standard size. 
And I think there's like 120 gig and stuff like that. I still have my Backblaze backup. I still have my Time Machine backup and stuff. But it's good just to, like, if I have, like, a, a bunch of photos I took, I have a DSLR with a huge capacity memory card, like a 64 gig or 128. You can have a 256 somewhere. But anyway, that thing, the photo space is huge on that. So in order to, you know, properly store those somewhere would be great. So that's, you know, just some of the reasons why I'm going to be installing this Blu-ray burner into this Mac Pro. So uh, it should be fairly straightforward. So let's um, get started here. So this is, again, for those of you just tuning in, is an LG burner. This is a WH16NS40 is the model number. Uh, the only thing I do have to do in order for it to fit in the faceplate here is I actually have to take off this little bezel here. So uh, I have all my tools here except for, unless I put it in here, uh, a paper clip. Nope. All right, so I'm sure I have one in this drawer here. That is a very, very messy drawer. Okay, we'll see if this one will do. Sometimes with the, the paper clips with the rubber uh, coating may not do it, but let's just put the paper clip in the eject mechanism. There we go. And so the whole idea is just eject this carefully. And there are clips and we just want to remove the bezel. So, see if I could do this carefully here. I want to make sure I'm taking it out the right way. Because if I had to use this in a PC or something in the future, I don't want it to break. So, this is not a very flattering angle of me, but you're going to have to get used to it. <laughs> Yeah, I see what I have to do. It's just, uh, there are three clips, and I could get, like, one or two of them. But to get them to all cooperate at one time is going to be a little bit of a pain. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Okay. The bezel just slides right off there. All right. So uh, we got the bezel out. We could close this back up. looks a little ugly, but it's going to be hidden most of the time. Okay, so next thing we have to do is take out the optical drives. So I'm actually going to stand up and move this Mac Pro. Probably making all sorts of scratches on this table here, unfortunately, but what are you gonna do? Okay, so the optical drives are here on the Mac Pro. So from what I understand, I believe this just slides out. Hopefully. I mean, this machine was not in the best condition when I got it. And I'm hearing all sorts of weird noises, but. It's like, um, it's on, it's on kind of like a sled. See if I can see if anything's like stuck in there. And just like push it back in. And back at. It should be fairly straightforward. I haven't done this in a while, but I don't believe you have to unscrew anything. You know, let me just take this hard drive out, just for good measure. Put that over here. <laughs> Time for bleeding to begin. Let's hope not. Uh, if it does, I will sure you surely blame you, Brock, because I hope not. All right, so it's, it's, it's uh, trying to come out here. Oh, you know what? There. No, those aren't screws for it. Huh. Ah. This does not want to budge. Man. Let me go get my flashlight. Let's see, yeah, the front. <laughs> yeah, something's stuck. Um, I'm trying to like peek in here because, yeah, with with the latch up, uh, everything should slide out. It could be that 
the latch wasn't closed properly at one point. And um, that could be it. There we go. Yeah, the front was just a little stuck there. But that's okay. All right, so now that we have the front out here, So I'm gonna just pull out the power to from the data cable here. Oh, that's a little dusty too. Uh, I don't know if I have any paper towels. Do I have a tissue or a napkin or something? Mm. Yeah, it's a little dusty in there. Actually, I'm just gonna get a paper towel real quick because I don't want to leave that dust in there. Excuse me one moment. Okay. All right, so hopefully this will take care of all that dust. Hey, Tosh. Yes, yeah, so I will leave room for the back connectors there, hopefully. Uh, so this is what the uh, mechanism looks like. <laughs> Very dirty Mac Pro. Yeah, that's all that dust, and that's not even... It's not even from here. Oh boy. Yeah, there's a lot of dust bunnies hiding in there. We definitely don't want dust, especially on the uh, the laser of the optical drive. That would not be beneficial for anything. All right. Okay. Now, something that's cool that I didn't remember until a little while ago when I was prepping for this video, and yes, despite what it seems, I sometimes do actually prep for live streams, <laughs> despite everything that seems to go wrong sometimes. Um, what's nice is, so this is, this is what we removed from the Mac Pro. It comes out like this, is the top optical drive. What's nice is, that, of course, there are two drive bays. So uh, where are the screws? Because the drive is connected here and secured with screws. Well, act actually, Apple gave you four screws, two for each side, for your second optical bay. So that's pretty neat, I think. Um, you know, very forward thinking. They did something similar uh, to the G5s, I believe, for the hard drive sleds. They had little rubber gaskets or screws or whatever for that. So this should be fairly straightforward. Um, and so we're going to take our new optical drive, which is one of the shorter form factor ones. So it's just exactly the same size as the other one. Looks very similar to it. And uh, the existing drive is a, I'm going to actually take a picture of this, because why not? Is a HL data storage super multi DVD writer model GH80N. And that is from April 2012. So this is just a standard DVD burner and uh, made in Tokyo, Japan. So that's pretty cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're first gonna angle the camera slightly down so you can actually see that and the mess of wires behind it. <laughs> and we're gonna take our new optical drive and I'm gonna put it in the second bay because um, why not? We'll leave the original one intact. Um, yeah, see, this seems to be bent a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and bend it. It's very soft metal. I'm just going to bend it back slightly because I think that's... Uh, this machine was... I don't know what happened to it. This thing was beat up when I got it. Uh, it was from a recycler, so they probably just literally got them in a pallet and they all got smashed up or whatever. All right, so that's not as, that's not as sticking up as much, so that should be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert the optical drive in here. Um, but first, I'm going to take out these screws here. Get my screwdrivers out. Let's see. Uh, Phillips, Phillips, Phillips. Make sure we have the right screwdriver. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. 
And I'm just going to take out the screws that Apple has generously provided. Surprised they didn't charge you for them. <laughs> I'm sure they worked it into the cost of the machine. Yeah, the bottom of it, the enclosure is warped, yeah. So that that's, I'm guessing, why it was not coming out easily. And speaking of not coming out easily, there we go. These screws are quite, oh, there we go, quite happy where they are. And uh, they're putting up a, a bit of a fight. I have a, a cord, I had a, uh, well, I still have it. I have a cordless screwdriver, but they don't make the batteries for it anymore. It's one of those rechargeable things. And uh, I swear those companies just, uh, move around from one rechargeable battery type pack to another just to get you to buy a whole new set. But I probably should invest in another. All right, so no, I can't even do those by hand because they're, yeah, they have that, um, this like blue, I think it's like a little glue or adhesive or whatever. And Apple screws usually have the this blue stuff on it. I forgot to turn on Do Not Disturb on my watch. How about that? Hey, Ken from uh, the Computer Clan retweeted my uh, my little tweet there. Thanks, Ken. I don't know if he's watching, but uh, also thanks for reminding me to put on Do Not Disturb here. <laughs> $25 per screw from Apple. I would not be surprised, especially see them charging for wheels these days. Pixelous mod it while you're here. Sorry, I didn't see that earlier, Jay. Um, if I had a graphics card that was worthy of a Pixelus mod, I would do that. I just have the standard ATI, one gigabyte, whatever the heck. And then this stupid, um, SATA controller that I got from China that I was messing around with. And, and it's probably not really compatible with it, but I think I'll, I'll continue that messing around with that another time. But all right. So we're going to, looks like we slide into the front here. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a tight fit. This is somewhat a little warped, I think, and it is dusty. I could hear the scraping of the dust against the metal, which is a very strange sensation. And this, this poor thing. I mean, look at look at this big sc scratch. This is a pretty nasty scratch on this metal here. So this this thing has seen better days, but. I am the owner of it now, and I will take as best of care of it as I can. I say that before I drop the machine. <laughs> okay, it would not help if we put the optical drive upside down. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. All right, cool. And our screw holes are all aligned up perfectly. So we're going to just use these screws that... Apple has provided us and hope they fit. Did I just jinx myself? Come on. Let's try this one. That would be annoying. All right, there we go. Just one of those things where if it's off by like a millimeter, it won't go in. Oh, that's okay, Jay. Uh, this doesn't really see the light of day. I appreciate it. I do have a 2009 um, downstairs that all I do is play Unreal Tournament on. And I mean, honestly, if it's the same case, I mean, it's a lot of works, which is why I probably haven't done it. But this one has like a ding on the front and it's, the handles are, one of the handles on the bottom is bent. So it's like, doesn't really um, stand too well. I might just like do a, a case swap, but I'm very... I have other more important things like recapping old computers <laughs> than to than to do a cosmetic change. Uh, but I appreciate that, Jay. Uh, most of you probably saw it already, but uh, Jay's been releasing some cool videos. One was uh, one not too long ago. He did a, a series of puck mice videos, uh, which I love the puck mouse, and I don't have one on this desk because they're all downstairs. Uh, because filming of the follow-up iMac videos continue. Um, but uh, Jay did a cool video about, of course, cleaning the puck mouse. We know how, how his infamous, infamously long video on that was. 
Uh, but he did another cool video, which was neat, was on the uh, accessories for the puck mice. And you're thinking, what the heck is an accessory for a puck mouse? Well, um, they made these little handles and palm groove cases and whatever for the mouse just to you know, let you grip it a little bit easier. So um, that was uh, that was interesting. It was an interesting time for for Max because there were all these weird candy colored accessories going on. And I'll turn this plug into for Jay's video into a plug for my own video because <laughs> you probably already saw it. But I did an iMac video that uh, you know mentions sort of the same thing. But uh, yeah, check out uh, Jay's video. Jay, feel free to. Pop that in the chat there, self-promote yourself. And um, he was kind enough to let me use a clip of his video in mine to give you an idea of some of those silly accessories, which are actually pretty cool. If I ever see one, I will do that. <laughs> okay, so um, we have our optical drives here. So we have the uh, super drive on the top here, and then we have um, the Blu-ray burner on the bottom there. So that's all right, Josh. Um, good night if you're going. Um, so yeah, this is, this is, uh, pretty good. There's just there's some dust on the front of this here. Let me, uh, where the paper towel go later to use that. Oh, here it is. Just on the front of the bay there. All right. So, um, the only thing we have to do is before... We put everything back in. We have to plug in the cables. So let me adjust the camera again here. There we go. Yeah, that's good enough. And so we just have to put the cables back in. So the top cable will go to the top drive, and the bottom cable will go to the bottom drive. So let's make sure this is aligned. That's pretty good. Uh, this is not as not as painful as I thought it would be. Um, I actually, this is this is the first time I'm installing an optical drive into either a G5 or a or a Mac Pro. Um, obviously, the G5 is only one bay, but uh, the Mac Pro always had two. And I was always tempted to, if I ever got one, to put one in. But I'm fairly new to the Mac Pros. I haven't had them for well, ever since I joined the Mac Yet Crew. So it's a uh, it's sort of an, a disease, I guess. You, the good kind, you know. You, you get uh, addicted to, to Mac Pros. Um, so yeah, this is this is not too bad. I want it might be a little different on the 2008 models, but at least this is a, a 2012, which is the same as a 2009, I guess, or a 2010. Anyway, it's it's this this one's quite easy. So I say that as I'm stretching the optical drive cable here. Oh, to fix it in the. Place. There we go. All right, let's hope they, hope this slides in. Oh, that's much easier. Yeah. So that metal was bent before. Now it slides in easier. You see, this does wobble a little bit. Um, not too much to be annoying, but enough that if I'm burning a disc, I might wedge a, a piece of paper under here. Well, here's here's the uh, limited guarantee warranty from LG. If I put that under here, no. Which is the short leg? Oh, that's a short leg. If I get up and put it, whatever. If I put it under here, not as much. <laughs> All right. So um, I actually do not have a door for this one. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, very professional. I, I don't have a, a side door for this, so I've actually left it off. Um, yeah, so it's going to just remain off for now. Probably explains why my room gets a little warm, but it gets warm even when the computer's off. Anyway, so that's about it. So uh, I'm going to put the hard drive back in uh, before I forget. Uh, this is just the data drive. The SATA drive is already plugged in. going to close the latch. And um, oh, this is a piece of paper. It's an envelope because I have a custom power supply for this 30 inch monitor because it didn't come with one. And the power supply is uh, just a metal box. And so metal on metal may not be the best thing. So it makes me feel just a little bit better. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I can pull it closer because uh, it, yeah, it's uh, it's quite warm, but this is, this is what I'm talking about here. 
this big brick with these wires leading out of it looks very, very unsafe. Um, I assure you, it is fairly safe. <laughs> so now that that's done here, uh, I'm going to lift this up and uh, just turn it around. I don't want to try not to scratch the desk too much. But uh, what am I going to do? So there we go. These things are quite heavy, let me tell you. All right, so I'm putting the power supply back on the top where it will sit. And um, on top of the, oh, the, that's the, the card, that's the uh, SATA card, Jay. The, uh, the weird one from China. And the one above that is a USB 3 card. Those are the cards that are inside my Mac Pro. All right, so I'm plugging the display connector back in. Plugging in Ethernet. Uh, I'm probably going to forget something. Uh, USB. Uh, USB 3. Uh, I don't know what this is, but another USB 3. Sure, why not? Um, let's see. Speakers. We need our speakers. There we go. We know our speakers are plugged in. And I think all well, that's left is a power cable. So we're going to plug that in. I'm going to push this back a fair amount so I could shove more crap on the front of my desk here. And you know, let's fold this one more time. There. <laughs> it doesn't wobble much at all, see? That's pretty sturdy. <laughs> Yeah, it has that weird little Molex connector there. It's weird, but all right, so everything's plugged in. Um, I have my very professional Apple, what are these called? Uh, Apple powered or Apple design series speakers, whatever they're called. Um, and a very healthy amount of floppy disks on my desk. <laughs> this is why this desk is never filmed for anything because it is always a mess. Always, always, always. Uh, so we're going to turn this on. Usually the display is much closer to me, but um, I backed it up just so we can put the Pro on the desk here. We should get a chime in a second. Hopefully. There we go. There is our beautiful screen. Yeah, the, I saved this monitor from a dumpster. Um, I think I, the, one of them I got for free. This one I think I paid 10 bucks for it or whatever. And uh, the, the focus and the lighting is going to go absurd because this is the only light source in the room. Uh, let me turn this back on now that the screen's on. Let's see if it... All right, that's not bad. Um, yeah, so this, this one didn't have a power adapter. Um, and when I got the other one, it didn't have a power adapter either. Um, but I read online that um, the power requirements for it, and I was able to set that up. So we could throw that out and throw this out. And okay, so let's sign in here. And I'm not going to burn anything, but what I will do is, um, oops. What I will do is just go to a system profiler and make sure that uh, it actually sees the disk drive here. Go to system report and go to SATA. That's a lot of controllers. There we go. We have our uh, DVD burner and we have our Blu-ray writer. Sweet. Yeah, so writer, burner, whatever you want to call it. Um, seems to be recognized. Uh, I'm going to eject it. So now it says eject. Oh, that's cool. I never noticed that. So when you have two optical drives in there, the Mac OS eject menu actually changes, uh, at least in High Sierra, it's this way. It says open upper super drive, and the other one says open lower, and then it's the name for the Blu-ray writer. Um, that is pretty cool. So I could just go like that, and they both open. So um, do I have a disk? Do I have a disk here? Um, yeah. Let's see. We got... <laughs> Here we go, Power Mac G5 additional software and hardware test. So we'll put that in the top drive. And then we have Power Mac G5 
here's another set of installed discs. So make sure there's no dust on there. And put that in. All right, so that uh, the first disc is read perfectly fine. We have a PDF here. And the other one should come up in a second, hopefully. Oh, that's a noisy drive. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, Mac OS X installed disk 2. So yeah, what's, what's neat is um, there's an LED on the bottom drive. You kind of see it when it's accessing. Um, I do want to get this sticker off, this K number sticker, whatever it is. I think that was just like the, the number of the machine or whatever. I take that off, um, but I'll be doing that in another video or so. Um, yeah, so that was pretty straightforward and successful. Let's see what happens when you press the eject key. You both want to call them? Uh, just the first one. All right. But okay, yeah, I, I um, was expecting that to be pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that. Uh, all right, so I have to go to the eject menu if I want to eject the second one. Oh no, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I would say that's successful. Thankfully, we did not have any issues. And I forgot I had a set of G5 install discs, which is funny because I didn't have a G5 for the longest time. Uh, this says Panther 10.3.7. And disc version 1.0. So yeah, it says uh, Power Mac G5 Media. Probably got it from work. You know, they always were throwing out a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. So, and then this one was a hardware test for it. So, yeah, 2005. So, all right. I have, I have a set of G5 discs if I ever need them. Um, and then I have this extra bezel for the LG one. Uh, what's interesting is that the model disk drive uh, I put in here, they had two at the store. This one was uh, $65 at uh, Micro Center. Not a bad price. Um, I, I think I think when they were, because I, I this is not my first Blu-ray drive. Um, I bought a few for my PC back in 2008. Blu-ray was brand new. Didn't even have, I didn't even have a high definition TV. Uh, the first high definition screen in the house, in my parents' house, was my monitor, which was a Sony monitor. And it was 1920 by uh, 1200. So it was a little little uh, bigger than high definition in, in one direction. And uh, with that and with the, I think it was a Cyberlink software for the PC, uh, I was able to watch Blu-ray movies. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Because, you know, high definition and everything. Um, so I, I got a Blu-ray reader, just a read-only disc drive. I think it was like a, a 6x reader or something. It was early on, and I, pay, I think I paid about sixty or seventy dollars for it, and that was a, a pretty good bargain back in the day. Um, and then I got a Blu-ray burner, or maybe it was just a reader. I really forget if, if it was a burner or not, or maybe it was a combo drive, like a, a Blu-ray reader DVD burner, whatever it was. I got that, but it, it was. Um, it was kind of finicky. Like it, it didn't like a lot of the discs and uh, just like early DVD burners and early CD burners, they were a little touchy. Um, and then uh, when I left my previous job, they were throwing out some stuff and one was an external DVD uh, Blu-ray burner, like a light on Blu-ray burner. And it was actually one that I requisitioned to purchase years ago while I was at that job. And so like seven or eight years later, here's this thing that they were going to toss out. And I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> and that's the Blu-ray burner I've been using. And I probably haven't burned a Blu-ray disc since at least a year or so. Um, so I, I'm hoping to get back into that. That's why I installed one into here, uh, especially since this is all my multimedia files and everything. And uh, all the data that I'm going to burn to a disc would be on this machine. So it, it makes it very convenient. I don't have to have something external. There's this empty drive bay just sitting here with power and data. So might as well use it. Um, the only thing is that, uh, and I don't think it's a problem because, uh, yeah, no, that wouldn't be a problem. This is only a SATA 2 interface in here, but I doubt the, uh, the burning of a Blu-ray disc is going to exceed that. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, I guess that's about it. Um, I have some time here if you want to ask questions or anything. Feel free to, to go ahead.
Um, eject the super drive with thumb by pressing the right corner side of the cover. Right side of the cover? I did not know that. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, because the, um, the eject button is right there, right? I can't get the top one to do it. The bottom one pushes in a little bit more. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's uh, pushing on the uh, eject button. The top one, uh, not having luck with it. Uh, I don't want to break the thing, but uh, I'm guessing that eject button is not as sensitive. But that's really cool, Brock. <laughs> Did not know that. <laughs> but uh, that's really neat. Yeah. So um, for New Year's, I will be doing a, a stream, uh, basically like a countdown to New Year's type stream. Um, I don't want to give too much away because it, it's pretty neat what I'm doing. Um, but I'll just have the camera set up for a few hours. I won't be there. I actually have to, unfortunately, run some errands on New Year's, and then I'm going to a party afterwards. But um, feel free to watch it. <laughs> it might be silly. Uh, I hope it'll be enjoyable, at least. Um, so at least there'll be an old Mac to look at in, the, in that stream. So that, that's as much as I'm going to say right now. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I had to share today. Just going to be a short stream. But if you guys have any questions or uh, any feedback or something you'd like to see in a video or anything, I'm, I'm welcome to uh, chat for a bit as I clean up my tools here. I always have an extra space for these things. There we go. Whenever I need these little sponger th tools, I can never find them. <laughs> Got to set up all the Macs with a countdown timer. Uh, something along that way. Great stream. Happy New Year. Thank you, Brock. I appreciate it. Happy New Year, guys. It's not there yet, but um, close enough. It's we're we're getting there. It's sooner or later. Oh. I keep folding this up, and then I'm finding tools. No, wait, that won't fit in there. Uh, that I want to put in there. So there we go. Yeah. So uh, if uh, any of you have a, a Mac Pro and you want to add an, another optical drive to it, um, obviously this is not the best video, probably instructional wise, to to do it. Um, but it's pretty straightforward and. Uh, I'll probably actually try and burn a Blu-ray disc in the next week or so um, to try and uh, just see what it's doing. I think I have, I still have my version of Toast. Yep. So if I open that up, it actually should recognize uh, the optical drive and should uh, bug me the update there. Yeah, so if I go to burn a Blu-ray disc here, I can select Blu-ray. Either 23 gigabytes, 46 gigabytes, 193 uh, gigabytes, or 119 gigabytes. So depending on uh, the disk it uh, reads there, uh, the only disks I have right now, um, I don't think they're verbatim brand, um, if I need to order some. Uh, I don't think they're here. I did have a short stack of them. It was whatever my office didn't use anymore. I think they're Memorex branded or whatever. But uh, in speaking with Jay and a few other people, uh, verbatim has always been what I used for DVDs, um, especially if it's something like I want to use long term. Uh, so I'll probably end up buying the same, um, but I wanted to you know do a test or so first before I ended up buying the discs. Not that they're pricey, but it's you know, you're going to spend a good thirty or forty dollars for a stack of discs. So you might as well want to make sure you're actually going to use them. And honestly, the the Blu-ray discs I've had, which are I'm looking on the other side of the room because I think they're over there. Uh, I haven't touched them, and I've had that burner for years now. So I probably burned a handful of discs in my lifetime of Blu-ray discs. So yeah, um, yeah. I hear I hear good things about Sony too. Um, I'm gonna just see what they're what uh, the prices are out there. Maybe I'll try a few. I mean, I've I've I think I only burned one coaster, one non-functional disc with the Blu-ray drive I had now. Um, and I think it was it was a USB issue because I was using a USB three drive over a USB two connection, and I think it couldn't it couldn't get something fast enough, or there was some buffer error or something. So yeah, optical discs are always gonna be a little flaky once in a while. I mean, it's nothing compared to what I used to go through. My first my first experience burning a CD this will date me um, <laughs> was my my father's uh, Power Mac G four. Uh, he originally got a USB D, uh, CD burner, and of course, it turns out that uh, the USB port on the on the G4 was like 11 megabits per second or whatever. 
And he had a SCSI card in it. So he ended up returning the USB one because it didn't even work with the Mac. Um, and he got the SCSI version of it. And so we had this external SCSI CD burner. It was a Yamaha. I think it was a, a 4X or a 6X burner. Um, I think it was like a 6X and a 4X were writable, something like that. Um, so that was like the maximum burn speed of a CD it was like 4 or 6X. It was insane. Uh, it, would, it would take quite a long time to burn a disc, um, especially on oh, was 8.6 or 9. It wasn't too quick. And, um, yeah, that, that was, that was something else. That was, geez, it was like watching paint dry. Um, but I remember sometimes, especially to get a disc to work in like a CD player for your car or your, your Walkman or something like that, your portable CD player or your boom box. And these are all terms that these kids don't understand these days, but, but I keep going on <laughs> in order to play it in a CD player. Uh, you used to have kind of the burn on one X speed. Uh, which would be extra slow. And the thing is that a lot of the lasers, or at least from what I recall hearing at the time, a lot of the lasers in those devices were not sensitive enough or were not designed to read burn discs. Uh, so later on in the CD burner's life, you would see, especially on like the, the bezels of uh, optical drives or CD players or something, you would say like CDRW compatible or MP3 compatible, stuff like that. You know, those meant different things. But um, it would be aware of like, hey, you know, you could actually use computer discs on this and discs you burned at home and mix tapes and mix CDs rather and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, that was my first CD burner experience was that was that SCSI burner. Um, I still have the case downstairs. I don't know if the, the disc drive is, is probably hanging around somewhere. Um, but, yeah, that was that was. I don't know. I don't know why we didn't do one internally, but I guess. I guess it was cheaper at the time to just buy a, a that's right, yeah, because the internal drive was a DVD ROM. And so the, the external drive was a CD burner. So we had the best of both worlds back in was it early two thousands then. <laughs> um, speaking of CD burning, my first DVD burning experience. Oh my goodness, that was the same computer, believe it or not. Um, I got brave and we ordered we ordered a pioneer. Uh, it was like a 102 or 103 model. Some somebody figured out that the that if you ordered a super drive from Apple on their newer Quicksilver or Mirror Drive door machines, um, the DVD burner that Apple labeled as a super drive was actually made by Pioneer. And so basically, the drivers and the compatibility and everything for that drive was part of the Mac OS. So if you had OS 10, you had access to the drivers or whatever for that drive. And so I think it was either in the back of Macworld or Mac Addict or one of those magazines. Um, we ordered um, a DVD burner, or, or I, think, I don't know if I did or my dad did, or, or one of us ordered a DVD burner. And it was ba it was basically the first time we opened up the G4 to do anything except uh, installing memory. No way, I'm lying. I think I think we put in a hard drive. Yeah, because they originally had a 20 gig hard drive. We had an 80 gig hard drive, and so we opened it up and we replaced the the DVD reader with a dvd burner and um that uh that sort of that that was that was really cool but it, it showed the age of the machine because a 450 megahertz g4 tower is not the best at rendering video <laughs> um yeah uh i remember using imovie uh to import uh, VHS tapes from uh, our VCR using an analog to, to digital Firewire box. So I had a bunch of these old videotapes from my home movies that my parents took and all this stuff. And I wanted to make DVDs out of them. And I, it was really cool. I mean, iMovie wasn't that sluggish. I mean, it, it was kind of slow, but it was everything was also raw DV. So it was like 13 gigabytes an, an hour or something like that. So they weren't really compressed video files or anything. So the processor, I guess, didn't have too much to, to strain about. But when you wanted to make a DVD, it had to encode all that video footage as MPEG-2, which took forever. It would take hours, probably like five to seven hours would be a conservative estimate. Um, sometimes if it was a little faster, it was like four or six hours. So it was one of those things where I would like, I mean, also it's like you're burning like a two hour movie. So I'd have to get the movie in line and you know, put in the timeline, make my edits or my cuts or whatever, make sure I wasn't going over the limit because then the disc wouldn't burn. Um, and yeah, that was, 
Oh my goodness, that that was that was a trip because I was using iDVD, and so when my iMovie was done, I'd have to render it, and you had to be sure you were done because once you hit render, it was gonna the computer was tied up. No one else could use that computer, so I would usually do it like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night. I knew nobody was gonna use it until the morning, and it would just render. And sometimes it would freeze in the middle, and that was oh, that was terrible. Uh, that was just awful. It would just freeze up and like you'd have two hours to go and some system update would try and do something or something would freeze up the system. Jay says my ATI rage with an encoder on it made short, very long work of that. <laughs> yeah. This, this also had an ATI rage. It was a, I think it was just like the 128 stock graphics card that was in the AGP model. I don't know if putting in a graphics card at that time would have helped encode MPEG-2 better. Maybe it would have. I don't know. Um, but it was night and day difference when I in 2006 when I got the first Intel iMac. It was like rendering of the videos was about two or three hours for like a two-hour DVD. So it was like almost real time where the on the G4 it was like more almost triple the time it would take. So it was it was a huge difference to me, and I started burning DVDs left and right uh, using iDVD on that iMac, and that iMac had a built-in SuperDrive DVD burner, uh, so I think it, it burned it at, I think it was like 4x or 6x. It's gonna drive me crazy if I don't look it up. Um, let's see here. It was not the Core 2 Duo um, model. It was let's look it up. It was the Core Duo. The one that came out just before it, unfortunately. <laughs> that's that's the one I had. Uh, yeah, the 8x uh, dual layer super drive. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, what what kind of cream in the world will heal that, but uh, maybe I'll shove it on my forehead. <laughs> Combo drive. You had a combo drive. You have a combo drive in yours or just a, a super drive, Jay? Yeah, yeah. The super drive was in the, the iMac 20 inch core duo. Right, let me turn the screen off because it's just making the camera go crazy. Um, yeah, that was in the, the 20 inch iMac I got in 2006. That's the one I had. Um, I still have it. I just. It's, I think the screen's in pieces. Well, the, the frame's off of it. But, uh, yeah, that, 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 that machine's pretty pretty interesting. What, Jay, what was your, uh, what was your first, uh, and, and anyone in the chat as well, what was your first uh, CD burning or DVD burning experience? What year did you start? Uh, CD burning, I, I remember, I, I guess it was, it was middle school. I was in sixth grade, I think. And I just found out about Napster. And... There was a Mac version called Maxter, maybe that came out a year or so later, and then LimeWire and all these file sharing sites, very legal, of course. Um, and uh, I remember, I think it was eighth grade, I distinctly remember a conversation on the school bus. Someone said, oh, but you can't copy CDs. And I'm thinking, but on my Mac, if I open up Adaptech Toast and click on copy, it copied a CD perfectly. <laughs> so so that was, that was you know, I... It was a dork, so I kept my mouth shut. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, I could copy them. I don't understand. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty good. The external Sony Firewire Six X CD burner. I actually have. Um, it's a sim. It's probably it's like a similar concept. I forget the name of the uh, VST is the is the brand, and it's this little um, Firewire bus powered CD burner, and it was. You designed for laptops. It does have a little power receptacle, but Firewire was able to power it fine. Um, and so I actually used that with my Lime uh, clamshell iBook because when I had that iBook, um, it had a DVD-ROM drive, but I couldn't burn CDs, and it only had USB one. So if I wanted to like make a CD or something like that, uh, Firewire was ideal. So I I actually would plug that in, um, and it's bus powered, so I don't need a power cable or anything. Just need one Firewire cable, and um, it actually works great because. Um, I use that on my slot loading iMac G3s because a lot of the slot load drives have trouble ejecting or or uh, you get your disk stuck in there and that's not fun. Um, and so I use that um, as a bus powered one for those iMacs where I'm trying to restore them or boot from his disk or something like that. I think I, I featured that 
in that live stream I did with that iMac G4 that just did not want to have anything installed on it. But yeah, I don't think uh, the bulkier one I have is not bus powered, but this tiny one is, which is nice. So yeah, I mean, well, hopefully this uh, burner in here lasts a while. That would be appreciative. Um, I haven't, I think I've had like one optical drive fail on me and it like stopped reading some discs, but would read others. And maybe it just the laser need to be cleaned, but. <laughs> yeah, it, they, they don't make things like they used to. I mean, there's, you, even today it's hard finding like external optical drive bays that are like Firewire or USB 3. A lot of them are all for SSDs or, you know, for regular hard drive size, you know, 3.5 inch hard drives. Uh, you can find optical bays, but they're not as common, um, especially if you're trying to find a Firewire one. I mean, back in the day, Firewire was what I always looked at, but now USB 3 is so much faster and, um, you know, I can't afford any of this Thunderbolt stuff, nor, nor do I think I need that. It's kind of overkill for what I need. Um, I'm practically, I mean, perfectly happy with a USB 3 enclosure. It's probably fast enough for what I need. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I prefer. But back in the day, Firewire was the, the fastest way to go. And uh, Apple had it on all their Macs. So even if you had a low-end iBook, you had a Firewire port on it. And so it was great because, oh, well, a, a mid-end, a mid-range iBook, let's say. Uh, it was great because you were able to, to just, um, you know, just add CD burner capabilities to your computer, which is great. Um, that was the only other thing, though, uh, for iTunes and iDVD for the longest time. And I think I think now it's it's just you know nobody really uses the softwares are outdated, but um, you needed an Apple shipped or an Apple supported uh, CD burner or DVD burner to use the CD burning. Uh, you know capabilities of iTunes or the DVD capability, uh, a DVD burning capability for iDVD. For the longest time, if you just bought any standard PC DVD burner or CD burner, it might work, but also might not. There was no guarantee. I think there was some software that people made, like drivers and stuff, to like try and like trick Apple to, or they like trick or remove the check that would see like the drive model or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Jay, Jay knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so for the longest time, I remember that was the fear when we were getting the DVD burner for uh, my father's uh, uh, Mac Tower was, oh, is it going to be compatible? But since it was the exact same model that Apple was using, you know, it was it was a pretty safe bet. But uh, Patch Burn was one of them. Oh, okay, cool. I'll have to look that up. Not that I, I really do many disk burning activities these days. Well, not that I would even on an older Mac, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things where you had to have a compatible drive, otherwise Apple just left you out. <laughs> just like, we don't need you to burn iTunes. You, you, you should buy a newer Mac that has a built-in CD burner. Um, but it's actually interesting because, you know, just a preview of, um, uh, speaking of CD burning, let's turn into a whole disk burning live stream. Uh, before I end here, um, what's interesting is the iMac DVs originally came with DVD reader drives you know just just reader drives um yeah it was very fun back in the day figuring that out on your own yes it is nostalgic uh so the imac dv and i'm looking over here because i have one sitting over there uh the special edition graphite one came with a dvd rom drive and all the other models came with just a 24x cd rom you know drive but eventually those dvd rom drives were replaced with cd burning drives and it was not until the technology came about for like the combo drives, which was a CD burner and a DVD reader, that uh, people with the iMac really had a choice. I mean, sure, it could do something externally. Thanks to Firewire, it was pretty quick. Um, probably just as fast as your, your internal drive was because the bus speed and everything over Firewire is pretty quick. But uh, the iMacs, you know, they, they switched over to CD burners because everybody who wanted... Um, to, to use iTunes, everyone wanted to rip their own music, burn CDs and stuff. And that's whole Apple's whole rip, mix and burn campaign was built on, you know, Hey, let's, you know, stick a, a CD burner into all these iMacs. And if you want a DVD ROM drive, sure. You can plug one in and you know, you can use that firewire connection. But, uh, Jay says anyone has ever, has ever, yeah, <laughs> can't talk now. Has anyone ever used a DVD Ram drive? I have zero experience with those. I actually have one. Um, it was actually included in a box of stuff I got, 
Um, the only thing I know about DVD RAM drives is Apple, for whatever reason, sometimes accidentally included them, maybe on purpose, uh, on some of the Power Mac G4 machines. I guess maybe there was a shortage of DVD ROM drives and the DVD RAM drive did the same thing. I think I have one or two Macs. I think it's a Quicksilver that actually has a DVD RAM drive in it, which is actually interesting because it's kind of like a, you, know, you burn a disc kind of, but yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I always want to play around with that. I think um, I think there was a video that Technology Connections did. I'm gonna Google it real quick. Um, maybe that's where I'm, I'm recalling. Yes. So I'm gonna paste this link in here, and this guy he does great videos. Um, and uh, he did a whole video on DVD RAM, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I I wish I had all of the pieces from floppy disk to Blu-ray. So the question that Jay asked here is, is there an evolution of storage media video coming, Steve, from floppy to Blu-ray? I wish I could, but there's so many that, and so many odd ones that I just leave it out. I mean, from my experience, it goes floppy disk, zip disk, uh, CD burner, flash storage, like USB flash drive, uh, DVD-R, uh, SSD Blu-ray. That's, that's those are the things like I've used common enough. Uh, you get into LD ROM, LaserDisc ROMs, and all these crazy cool floppy magnet magneto optical things, super disk drives and stuff. I just don't have a lot of them. I'd love to do like, hey, let's see how fast this one is versus this, but a lot of the stuff I have doesn't work. Uh, SideQuest discs are another one. I could go on forever on that stuff. That it's probably another six hour live stream right there. Just about <laughs> just about that. But uh, yeah, so sorry for the rant, but uh, yeah, optical drives are pretty cool, and uh, I don't I don't really know if a lot of people use them today, other than for backing up storage. I mean, every once in a blue moon, I'll I'll burn a CD for my car. My car still has a six CD changer in it, um, so as long as I have that car, knock wood, um, <laughs> uh, I have CDs in there. So I'll, and that plays MP3 CDs. So I don't even have to do an audio CD. I could just shove a bunch of MP3 files onto there. Uh, I used, usually use an iPod, but uh, I have to replace the batteries in those, and the CD holds enough. So I usually just burn a bunch of stuff and slap it on there. Um, I don't really burn DVDs anymore. Uh, I burned one a few days ago, but that was just to, to uh, make a backup of something. But uh, yeah, it used to be, I did it all the time. My first DVD burner, oh my, that's right, my first DVD burner, uh, my personal one, my dad had his already. But I had a PowerBook G4 12 inch. I don't know if I don't know if I had that DVD burner first before my dad got his, or the other way around. Anyway, my friend had one first. He got a PowerBook 12 inch with a 1x super drive in it. So he was burning DVDs, and it was super slow, but it worked. And I was very envious of him, and I, I was happy to to get mine eventually and do the same thing. I need to burn like 10 Snow Leopard DVDs this week. Yeah, I rarely burn anything anymore. Yeah, um, I, I used to burn a lot of OS 10 DVDs, like the install media, just as backups. But what tripped me up was, I think it was Leopard, where they started using uh, discs that were just big enough. So you needed like a dual layer disc. And back in the day, those were kind of uncommon. And you used to get DVD plus R dual layers, but Max really couldn't burn them correctly, at least of the drive I had. Um, so you'd have to get like the minus R dual layer and you could hack the DMG and take some of the language support and printer drivers out of it to shrink it. But like, yeah, I mean, that was, geez. And then Tiger, Tiger was the first version of OS 10 to ship on a DVD. So you could mail away, I think it was a copy of four CDs or something like that. <laughs> hey David, that's all right. You can always rewind. That's a, that's a good thing about YouTube. You could always rewind, but, um, uh, we got the optical drive in here, so we're just wrapping things up and chatting about our, our fond memories of burning optical discs. So feel free to chime in. What was your first CD burning machine or DVD burning machine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Building out an imaging server is probably best. Or, just, or if your Mac supports it and if the OS supports it, just make a flash disk out of it. Uh, I, I was very surprised to see that Micro Center for $3 has a 16 gigabyte USB 3.0 flash drive I mean, for that price. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cheap. And like the 32 gigs ones are like four or $5. Probably, 
probably partition a bunch of them. Just have like one USB stick with a bunch of them. I think I think Greg Greg Rucke did that for his uh, iMac video, where he installed the same version of uh, Mac OS on his iMac. Either he did that or used an external hard drive. I, I hope he didn't use CDs. That would have taken forever. But yeah, installing from anything but a CD is much much quicker uh, than installing from optical media. So. Uh, yeah, I think I've, I've ran out of things to say about optical media. I don't want to bore any of you. Um, yeah, any, anything before like a G3 or G4 tower, or even the G3, G4 towers. Um, yeah, I would try and stick to like an optical drive or, uh, actually like an external firewire hard drive sometimes works depending on what OS and what model I've done that. I've booted off of like an external firewire drive and done an installation. Uh, yeah, see, mine was an iMac early 2006, so I got the Core Duo. You had the Core 2 Duo. Nice. <laughs> I was always envious that, uh, you know, ever since Apple switched to Intel, their revisions have become very steady. Well, more steady than they used to be. But, uh... oh, cool. All right, I have to check that out, Jack. Oh, I remember those Sony drives. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So it looks like it's a 12x writer, 8x rewriter, and 32x reader, if I'm reading that correctly. So 32x read speed, 8x rewrite speed, 12x burn speed. That was a thing. With CDs, uh, you, you had CDRW, so you could get a special type of disc. It cost a little more but you could theoretically erase that disk and then rewrite data to it. The trick was you couldn't have any scratches or dust on it or um, <laughs> that disk wouldn't be so good <laughs> to use anymore. Uh, I think Bert, like the read-write support was always flaky on a Mac. I've never really tried it. Um, I remember using Nero on a PC, which I had better luck with, but I really didn't, didn't do that because I, I was, it was just cheaper to just get the regular CDs. Yeah, yeah, I I really didn't have good luck with it, and I think I have a, a few blank DVD RWs, and I'm like, I didn't even touch them. I think they're still in a case somewhere because I I'd rather just burn it once and be like, okay, that's if it works, it works. If not, I'll toss it out. But um, yeah, it was trying to be like a, a like a like a super floppy disk type thing where you could read and write data to it. Um, but you know, you had to do it in sessions and stuff like that. That that's the thing why DVD RAM. If you watch that video I linked above in the comments, why uh, DVD RAM I think tried to try to do something a bit better than that. But with flash drives these days, with higher capacities and a Blu-ray disc, it doesn't really make much sense to do that. But um, oh, and yet this is this is not some weird rash or anything. I actually burned myself on a waffle maker. So <laughs> I made waffles and burned myself. So that was fun. Um, it just looks much darker on camera than it is. Must be the light. But anyway, I'm running out of things to talk about. So uh, I hope you guys had a good holiday season and everything. Um, I will be doing, as I teased a little bit earlier, be doing some type of live stream on New Year's Eve. I won't be here, but there's going to be an old Mac counting down to something. It'll be fun. Uh, so hopefully that'll be entertaining, and hopefully the Mac doesn't fall asleep <laughs> or something while it's, while it's being uh, streamed. Uh, but thanks for sticking around with me. I'm glad we installed the optical drive in this Mac Pro. And uh, I'll be uh, happy to see uh, how it works. I'm going to test out some disks over the next few days or something like that and see how that works. But thanks, Jay. Thanks, David. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out here. And um, I guess I'll see you next time. And uh, we're going to do a giveaway video soon. We, me. I'll be doing that giveaway video soon for that uh, Susan Care Icons book. I just have to figure out, I want to incorporate an old Mac into generating like the random name. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that real soon. So take care guys. And I'll see you soon. And um, that's about it. Happy new year. Hope to see you soon.